God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And another opportunity, another privilege. We ask your blessings now upon this time that we now share together that you would strengthen us now and prepare us to say a word and that that word might fall upon good soil right. and that the harvest will truly be great and masterful in the marvelous name of Jesus. Amen. 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 amen and amen. God is, he's still good. Because if he's good yesterday and if he's good today, he'll be good tomorrow. Because good is his nature. Everything he made was good. Amen. amen. He's just good. Amen. And so we greet you in that name that is above every name. And that is the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. There is a word, there is a word that's found in uh, uh, the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. There are some interesting words. Yes, yes, yes. Listen to the words of the text. Acts is that book found right after the Gospel of John. Listen. The former account of Mato Theophilus, all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. All right. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know time or the season which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the end of the earth. Ah, the, the word of the Lord. Amen. And for a few moments, I just want to talk about unfinished business. Unfinished business. During the ministry moments, I shared that we've got a long ways to go. Uh, personally and physically and politically and spiritually, we've got some unfinished business because we have not realized all of our potentials. We have not realized all of the promises that God has made to us. We have not realized all of the promises that the United States of America has made unto us. Yeah, yeah. And uh, every time we bring our check of freedom to be cash, they claim bankruptcy. Mass incarceration is just slavery under another name. Cheap labor. Jesus was clear 
when he said that he wants to continue to do what he did in his Palestinian ministry. I think I said he was clear that he wants to continue through us to do what he did in his Palestinian ministry. What did he do in his Palestinian ministry? He communicated truth. Yeah. Listen to what he says. I know what you say. I know you said I for an eye. But I see a Love your enemies. I know what you say. But I say my burdens are light and my yoke is easy. Sometimes we We start singing songs and becoming all melancholy and mushy over stuff that's really not theological. Listen to us. Nobody told you that the road would be easy. Jesus did tell me that it would be easy. I know it must be some of y'all bubble you said, look at that, it's funny. It's so hard to get along. Come on, make it live. I just came. It just did, Father. Hardly get along. And I said to some some time ago, I said, please stop singing that song. Because you give folk the impression that being a Christian is so hard. It's no harder than being a hypocrite. And the fact about it, it's easier to be a Christian than it is to be a hypocrite. Because when you are a Christian, all you gotta do is just be yourself. But when you're a hypocrite, you got to remember how, when to act. Jesus did, he communicated truth. He did say, my burdens are light and my yoke is easy. But now if you try to do it your way, you're going to have a hard time. And so whenever you say, I can't hardly make it, it's so hard to get along, I got to pray to get along, I got to say, that sounds good. Uh, but it's not theological. Jesus says just the opposite. He said, my burdens are light and my yoke is easy because if you are yoked up with Jesus, if it gets too heavy for you, all you got to do is shift the load. And, and he will bear your burden. And, and, and if you do like he tells you to do, it will be easier. I heard somebody say earlier this morning in the church school lesson, they found out that life was so much easier after they learned how to forgive. The burden. Became light. Je Jesus, Jesus was very clear <laughs> that he wanted to continue <coughs> through us what he did when he walked on the earth. Uh -huh. And that was to communicate truth, to heal the minds. A lot of times we got sick minds while we are sick in the body. We got sick minds. And, and, and a lot of times we got sick ideologies because our minds have not been healed. Our minds have not been renewed. That, that's, how come, that's how come Paul, the Apostle Paul, he said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind did Jesus have? Jesus had a mind that would allow him to love without limits. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. I think I said something. Yeah. 
love without limits. We got rings and we got limits on our love. I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, I tell you, I tell you, love is a decision. Love, you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision to love. You got to decide to love. And when you decide to love, you got to decide between good and evil. Uh, Romans 12, 9 said, love without hypocrisy. And how do you do that? You hate that which is evil and cling to that which is good. Look at Jesus. His love was without limits. Therefore, he could, he could heal sick minds. He could heal folk who were emotional. And he was also concerned about their physical well-being. And that's really how I got my definition for love. Love is the decision and a commitment to another person's spirituality and well-being. One writer says, the way you get along with other folk, you see the best in them and the worst in you. And that will keep you humble and it'll allow you to get along with other folk. You see the best in them and then you see the worst in you. And I think Jesus put it this way. Jesus put it this way. Jesus said, how can you say to Terrence, yeah, yeah, yeah. That behold the moat in your eye. There's a little speck of dust in your eye. But there's a whole plank in my eye. And I'm trying to correct him. But I, I need to be able to see the best in him and the worst in me. Because what goes around comes around. And so if I can see the best in him, somebody may be able to see the best in me. But, but, but we, we don't get along because we are always looking at the worst in other folk. That's the world's way. That's not Jesus' way. And so Jesus, uh, uh, Luke, 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 he lets us know that he got a former account. His former account is the Gospel of Luke. And both of them was written to his friend by the name of Theophilus. Because he had a friend in high places. He was smart, he was a doctor, but he didn't know too much about this Jesus stuff. And he was sincere. And uh, he let us know that he was writing to Theophilus and to all of us. Yes, sir. And he says, he says, uh, Theophilus, Luke's gospel message to Theophilus was Christ-centered. Yeah, yeah. I said his, his gospel message and any gospel message ought to be Christ-centered. Yeah, yeah, because if it's not Christ-centered, it's not the gospel. Right. Right. It, it, his, his gospel message was Christ-centered. He says to Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, in other words, that he began, he finished his part, but, but it's not complete. It, it's incomplete. He says to Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do yeah. and to teach, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Christ seven talking about Jesus, yeah. until the day in which he was taken up. In other words, 
his work was conclusive and he finished his work but not our work. Uh -huh. And he wants to continue his work through us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. If you really want to know what your purpose is, is to be a part of the body of Christ and Jesus wants to do through his body now what he did through his body during the Palestinian ministry. Uh -huh. He said until the day that he was taken up, uh, in other words, Luke gives a brief synopsis. In other words, uh, 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 he proclaims the birth. It, that, all of that includes until the day he was taken up uh, from the birth to the ascension of Jesus. His announcement from his announcement of the birth of Christ until he was taken up and went to the Father. That includes the finished work on Calvary. That includes the resurrection. Just in case I don't say he got up early, I've already said it. Listen, Jerry. Right early, Because if 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 I talk about if the announcement, Luke's announcement started at the birth and then went to the ascension, it's assumed that he's already been resurrected. Yeah, yeah that, that's the gospel is. His gospel to his friend in high places, it was, it, it was Christ-centered. But not only was it Christ-centered, it was conclusive. It was conclusive. He says all that Jesus both began to do and to teach until the day which he was taken up. And afterward, through the Holy Ghost, given commandments to the apostles whom he had he had chosen. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. He presented himself. He presented himself. After the suffering of many infallible proofs, he presented himself. That's a resurrection. After he got up, after he suffered, he presented himself without many infallible proofs. In other words, there were folk who saw him after he got up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And so there was, there was no doubt. And how often it is, my brothers and my sisters, you can read a history book and believe everything you read in history. Oh, oh my God. God. I see Ain't that oh, something? Yes. Wake somebody up. Yes. And you'll read the newspaper and never question it. Woo. Wow. Right. But then you'll read the Bible and question everything. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 We got a long ways to go. We've got some unfinished business. Mm -hmm. But most of us are just like the apostles. Jesus talked so much about the kingdom. They want to know when Will you restore the kingdom again? They're talking about a Davidic kingdom. They, they remember the glory days when David united the kingdom and the kingdom was in his power, in its power, and they had conquered all of their enemies. Jesus is talking about a spiritual kingdom. They're talking about a political kingdom. Yeah. They, they, they sit under Jesus for three years. Mm -hmm. But their minds were so locked into a political kingdom that they never really understood what Jesus was saying. Uh -huh. So I don't get upset. I don't get discouraged when folk listen to me every Sunday and never get their minds around what I'm trying to say. Because even Jesus' close disciples. Jesus is talking about 
the kingdom of God, and they're talking about the kingdom of David. Wow. Yes. Mm. Lord, Lord, will thou, you, will thou, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? It's right there in verse 6. Will you restore the kingdom of Israel? Done. Jesus is not talking about restoring the kingdom of Israel. I don't care whether you're talking about the southern kingdom or the northern kingdom. Neither one was worth restoring. Amen. They want to go back to what they call the glory days. And how often it is, my brothers and my sisters, oh, that we want to go back to the glory days. Yes, don't you start nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you can shout when you were picking cotton, yes, sir, I plying a mule. I didn't do that. <laughs> Brother Vaughn, you did it. I told you earlier, I told you earlier, sharecropping was just another form of slavery. You had to go back to the same folk that enslaved you for a job. Because if you weren't, if you were caught walking around without a job, they could take you to jail. And, and see, along with the Emancipation Proclamation, we were supposed to get 40 acres and a mule, enough to take care of our families. That was never realized. We got a lot of work to do. We did not get our 40 acres nor the mule, because one mule was supposed to take care of 40 acres. But that was never realized. The disciples wondered, when will you restore the kingdom of Israel again? We keep talking about when we're going to go back to the good old days. Listen at the code language coming from the White House. Make America great again. When was America great for me? Look at, look at the economy, how it's growing. Most of us don't have a 401k or retirement where, 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 where the stock, where they are engaged in the stock market. That's primarily uh, 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 oh, yeah. yeah, primarily helping the one percent. We're talking about how great America is and how how great how great the economy is. Ask the average person how great it is. Do you see it in your paycheck? Right. Unfinished. Unfinished business. Oh, and I like what Jesus said. That Jesus, he knows he got a sense of what you like. Yeah. He said, mind your business. Stay in your lane. That's verse 7. He said unto them, it's not for you to know the time not the season. Why are you worried about that? Mind your business. It's not for you to know the time nor the season which the Father has put into his own authority. Even I don't know that. So why are you worried about it? You just be ready when he comes. You just follow orders. You just follow instructions. Yes, my Lord. But look who he's talking to. He's talking to these disciples. He's talking. He's talking to me, and that doesn't exclude me and you. That's right. He's talking to us. We want to know when is all this going to happen. He says, you just be ready when he comes. Yeah. He's talking to you personally. And it's a promise. And, and verse 8 has an inflow and an outflow. He said, you shall receive power. Okay. 
In other words, that's coming to you. That's coming. But then you shall be my witness to the end of the earth. That's outflow. In other words, let, let, let me put it this way. You don't get the Holy Ghost to do your own thing. The Holy Ghost is only given for witnessing. Say that again. Talk, sir. You need to make that big. I, I said the Holy Ghost is only given for witnessing. That's right. Witnessing. That's and, and, and if you're not witnessing, you don't have no outflow. And if there's no outflow, yet you become stagnant and stale. In other words, in other words, the river. The river purifies itself yes. because there's an inlet and an outlet. Yes, sir. Right. And, and if you and, 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 and Jesus says, out of your belly shall flow, and he's talking about the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The water, the river purifies itself because the water is always running. Now see, if you're from the country like me, we would rather fish in the river rather than the pond. Because some ponds don't have no outlet. And, and if you go into, the, go, go into the pond and you catch fish during the summertime when it's real hot and the water is still, they don't taste very good. But if you go and get it from the river, where there's an inflow, and an outflow, the, the fish is fresh and they taste good. And, and what, what, what Jesus is really saying is, if you got an inlet and no outlet, you are stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, but you shall receive. That's the end. That's the inflow. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta receive something. Yeah. And, and and you gotta receive something for something. Listen, will you? There's a purpose in which you receive something. Yes, sir. He said, the spirit shall come upon you and you shall be witnesses. In other words, in other words, if you don't really witness, you don't really don't have an outcome. Oh, Some vote. Some vote. Come church. Oh Lord. And all they do is take it. Take it. They like a pond, not a river. All they do is get fat on the gospel. And there is no outflow. Then I also heard Jesus in that 15th chapter of John saying, you are clean through the word. In other words, in other words, the word and the spirit is inseparable. And if the word and the spirit is flowing through you, that's what makes you clean. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. He said, and you shall be witnesses to me. That's the place. Mm-hmm. The place. the place, where am I going to be a witness at? Well. Jerusalem represents home. Mm -hmm. Judea represents my kinfolk. Uh -huh. Samaria represents folk I don't like. Ah. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Yeah. And then to the end yeah. of the earth. In a global society. Yes. I don't just witness oh, he's ready now, sir. Yeah. at home anymore. Uh -huh. But on Facebook. Oh. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Instagram. I'm witnessing all over the world. I got a friend by the name of Reverend Samuels in Sierra Leone, West Africa. He sends me messages all the time. In other words, he sends me a clip of his service. 
and he see a clip of my suit. And so we're witnessing to the uttermost parts of the earth. You see, God, God has a way of using that which other folk misuse. God can use it to his own glory. You got to use it in a positive way. I said on last week, it just may be that God uses Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to let us know that we are under constant surveillance for quality control purposes. God wants you to know that somebody is watching you right where you are. And if you receive some stuff, you ought to be able to give out some stuff. In fact about it, that is a good definition for a gospel preacher. Because I heard Paul say, that which I also received, I delivered unto you. And whenever I receive something from the Lord, and I have to stay before the Lord all week long, so I can receive some stuff. And so on Sunday morning, I'll have some stuff to give out. Yeah, yes, Lord. And he only empowers me to witness. Yes, Lord. God doesn't give his power to that which does not give him glory. And this word power is dynamite. In other words, he enables me. He infuses me with some dynamite so that I can proclaim the divine word of the Lord. And so everywhere I go, I tell the whole world about this Jesus because my message has to be Christ-centered. I talk about Jesus everywhere I go. I tell folk that you don't have to stay where you are. If you're down and out, he'll pick you up. If you've been hurt, he's got a whole lot of healing from his hurt. He got more healing in the hem of his garment than all of the pharmacies in the land and country. I said, do you know him? I said, ain't he all right? I talk about this Jesus. If you burn him down, he's a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. Do you know him? If you made a whole lot of mistakes, he'll give you an eraser for all of your errors. I said, ain't he all right? Is there anybody here? If you're lonely and all by yourself, he'll be a friend that will stick closer than any brother or sister. If your mama is dead and gone, if your father is dead and gone, he'll be a mother for the motherless and a father for the fatherless. 